Greetings, everyone. I'm Scott Rodell here at the Great River Taoist Center, home to our Academy of Chinese Swordsmanship. We're starting a new series, a questions and answers series that people have been asking us to do. And we've got quite a few questions, so this is very likely to turn out to be a series. And some of the questions were similar, so we kind of squished a couple together to sort of simplify things a little bit. The first question people asked is, what is the nature of Genfa? What are its kind of characteristics? And how might those differ from one school to the next? I think the best way to answer this is perhaps to quote uh, Li Jinglin, a very famous swordsman of the late Qing dynasty that lived into the Republic. And he said, the essential point of sword practice is that the body is like a swimming dragon. Definitely do not halt. With a long period of practice, the body and sword unite, the sword and spirit unite. So there's definitely no sword anywhere and everywhere there is a sword. When you can understand this principle, you are close to the Tao. So what did Li Jinglin mean by this? First of all, I'm generally not very <laughs> enthusiastic about sort of nature analogies or mythical animals and so on. But, but honestly, I quite like this one, this idea of the body or the, uh, the practice being like a swimming dragon. Uh, because I've seen in the wild snakes, and I've seen them swim across a river. And that is really amazing to see that very lithe, easy use of the body. And you know, the current's just streaming by, and the snake is able to just take that current and go where it wants. And it's you know, in that very lithe kind of fashion. And I think that really is a good picture of how the body moves, how a genka moves in response to the, the currents or the, the cuts, the actions, the momentum that's coming at you when you have your sword in your hand, how you're moving with that, that very, very lively kind of body. So, so I quite like that, whereas I always like a lot of nature analogy kind of stuff. The other idea, of course, that uh, the body and sword unite and that, of course, the sword and spirit eventually unite and become one. I think that any long-term practitioner, anybody who's really put their time in, probably gets this right away. You could say in swordsmanship, or say in, in empty hand, of course, the, the whole body's unified as one. And normally you think, well, I have my upper arm and my lower arm. When you have your sword in your hand, you can think, well, I have my upper arm, my middle arm, and my lower arm. And over time, putting in your practice form, cutting, playing other people, you get this feeling of, yes, genuinely, you know, the waist has unified the body, has truly one piece, and there's no difference between the sword and your arm, and, and from your foot right out to the tip, it's one smooth, beautiful action that just flows as one piece. So there's no feeling that the sword and your arm are separated at all. You really achieve that. And the idea, of course, is of, of the spirit and the sword being united is that's really kind of your mind intent. You know, you're using your body, to, you know, feel where you need to go, your eye see it, whoosh, and your blade cuts it. It's just your intent, your whole physical body, the sword, are one piece, and they move and behave in that fashion. And the third point, that there's no sword anywhere, so there is a sword everywhere, I think is really also quite interesting. And, really probably speaks to how the sort of Chinese approach is quite different than approach you might find in other systems. I'm not a practitioner of other systems, so if I say something that doesn't disagree, <laughs> there are systems that do have similar thoughts, a similar approach, please forgive me, I'm only conversing in Chinese swordsmanship, so I may say something that's not correct. But I do think that this is something that is really special about Chinese swordsmanship, and that is, you're not putting your mind intent anywhere. I want my mind to be non-dualistic, to be free of thinking of, oh, there's an enemy or an opponent and there's myself. I want to let go of that. I don't want to look at his sword. I don't want to check the ground. I don't want to think about myself. I don't want to project into the future thinking about, oh, how I might be hurt or what I want to do. I want to let go of all of that. So there's, there's you know, no sword anywhere. There's no focus on a specific little detail, right, that's making me kind of have a kind of tunnel vision. And so there is a sword everywhere, right? When it comes to your vision, sometimes I've described this as, it's like 
all your vision becomes peripheral vision. I think any, any experienced martial artist gets used to sort of taking things everywhere and understands if you look at one thing, you tend to lose the rest. So you get this feeling like your eyes, kind of like blotters or a sponge, just soaking up everything. All your intent is that way. And you're not fixed on any one point, so your mind is free to be everywhere. And in this sense, you know, this is coming from a sort of Taoist point of view, Li Jinglin says, so when you understand this principle, you're close to the Tao. You're taking something that really comes or is influenced by Taoist practice and merge that with your sword work. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. We certainly enjoyed putting it together for you. Please let us know what other questions you've got. Post them below. We'll be making more of these questions and answers videos as days go by. Please also like, subscribe, and share. We really appreciate your support here at the Great River Dowan Center and, of course, of the Art of Chinese Swordsmanship. And don't forget to hit the bell so you hear about our upcoming videos. Thanks, everybody, and Zai Jian!